Hello, this is Steve from Show Homes Online and New Homes Historian, and you're listening to The Red Row Home Story, Part 1. In this episode, we look at the history of Red Row Homes from the mid 1970s to 1990. A young Steve Morgan left school part way into his A-level course. Steve favoured a career in construction over his A-levels. So he went on to do an OND in construction at Liverpool Poly. He completed his course in 1972 and then spent periods of time working in his dad's company under the name of Northern Developments or Cluey Construction. Steve went on to become a site engineer at Wellington Civil Engineering. In 1974, the recession was biting and Steve decided to branch out on his own. This was partly because of the Wellington's parent company decided to close their civil engineering business and they started to complete the remaining contract. Steve decided to take on some of the existing contracts and complete them. This was the boost that Steve needed to start his own business and this was financed by £5,000 from his dad. It was so successful that Wellington decided to use Steve to finish off any remaining contracts. In 1974, Steve was just aged 21. He needed a name for his new company, so he looked at his previous addresses, which were Redwood Drive and Harrow Drive. So he decided to take the Red from Redwood and the Row from Harrow and put them together and that gives you Red Row. They later went on to form a company called Harwood Homes, a starter homes brand, and they did exactly the same thing. They took the H-A-R from Harrow and the W-O-O-D from Redwood and created the brand Harwood Homes. By 1975, times were really tough and Steve's dad's company, Cluey Construction, was closed. And his dad, Peter, was concentrating on plant hire where it had all started for him in the first place. Steve took over the few Cluey contracts that were left. It was very, very difficult in terms of trading times. And Steve and his wife were contemplating on emigrating to the USA. Eventually, new work started to come in and the situation improved. And work came from Landudno Council and other civil engineering companies in the area. As they were Wales based, there was a company called Edward Jones Contractors. This was the North Wales largest civil engineering company. It was working for Edward Jones that Steve met Simon McBride, who was a bricklayer who he knew from his old school days. The friendship between them blossomed and they formed together a company called Mormac Construction, which later became Red Row Building. The company was a general building company and then one of their first projects was they built 18 bungalows in Kimmel Bay. The development was so successful that in 1978 they purchased another five plots in Hillview in Lanross. This was not so successful. It would be another three years before both of them came back into the new homes market. The guys realised very quickly that the Mormac name was just a name in the phone book. They needed an identity, so the Red Row logo was born. It was based on a plant motif, suggesting organic growth. The Mormac name was then dropped and Red Row Construction was now the new name for the duo's partnership. So into the 1980s, Steve and Simon forged ahead and made Red Row a name in construction and civil engineering. In 1980, they reported 172,000 in pre-tax profits. With Red Row growing so fast, the actual company was still being run from Steve and his wife Pam's bungalow. Red Row Building and Red Row Civil Engineering merged, leaving Simon with a 17% slice of the company. By 1982, the civil and local authority contracts started getting scarce and Red Row started to look at private housing again. 
So Steve and Simon knew that they could build a house for 11,000 and sell it for 20,000. Everybody else was doing it. So they started their first site, which was in Denby. They developed a no-nonsense way of construction, meaning that nobody could touch them. It was such an efficient system. The first site was in Denby called Alifaulia Farm. It was a development of 36 houses and bungalows. The site sold so well. Even so, it was time to buy another development. And that came in the name of Cluid Park in Kimmel Bay. Steve's mom, Mary, was a sales consultant and actually sold 36 houses within one month. The site was really saw the evolution of the new 1980s range, which helped by the enlisting of a local architect that started to look at making sure that houses were aesthetically pleasing and practical to live in. They started to produce a really strong portfolio of house types, from two bedroom bungalows or two bedroom semi-detached houses, right through to four bedroom detached houses, and later some of the larger houses were created. The success of Red Row was beginning to upset other developers and they were starting to feel the pinch. The Red Row sales machine went into full action. As soon as planning was approved, they got a sales centre on the site and started selling their houses. People were queuing up and camping outside for the sales office to open. The third site was Old Hall Park in the Wirral with 124 units built in just a year. You could buy a two-bedroom semi-detached bungalow from 21,950 or a two-bedroom semi-detached house for 23,950 or a detached bungalow for 35,000. They were getting big very, very quickly and the success was simple. Low overheads, quick turnover of capital. The Red Row contracting side was also healthy with shopping centres, council buildings and all sorts of different civil engineering projects. In 1984 the company had 359 people. Within two years another 200 would join the team. Red Row saw a turnover of 13 million and in 1986 22 million. By 1987 51 million. That was, for some developers, a staggering turnover. In 1983, the pre-tax profits were of 401,000. By 1987, pre-tax profits were 4 million. That is absolutely outstanding. By 1985, Red Row wanted to be building 500 homes a year and all the new house types were selling well with the introduction of the Stratford, the Lincoln and the York Bungalow. They became a very strong brand and the three and four bedroom detached houses really became their bread and butter during the mid 80s. Red Row's first ever office was in Steve and Pam's home address in Redwood Drive in Rill. The second office was actually in Stephen Pam's house again in Tremican. They moved eventually to Denby Industrial Estate and expanded that building several times. Then they moved to Altami outside Mould and they built the larger headquarters which was known as Red Row House. I do apologise if I get any of these Welsh names wrong, please correct me. With the sudden rapid growth of any company, that could put serious strains on any working relationships. And unfortunately, Steve and Simon had different management skills, which led to Simon parting from the company on the 20th of May 1985. Steve brought Simon 17% share and gave Simon 400,000. Simon went on to set up my bride homes in the same year 
And without Red Row, I don't think either Steve or Simon, it would be where it is today. Or Simon would be have the experience to go on and have his own company. McBride enjoys amazing success and during 2015 and 2017 it enjoyed a 252.2% growth. Simon started his first development in Degenway with 27 houses. These stunning Tudor style houses were the staple of McBride homes and are in my personal top 10 of house designs. McBride have carried that quality on for decades and established a great customer base in the northwest and Wales area. The split of Simon and Steve was very amicable and they've both gone on to create very, very good companies. Between 1985 and 1990, Redrow went through various changes. The company was expanding, but before that, they needed to get a financial director on board. So, Steve put an advert in the Sunday Times, drew up a shortlist and came across Paul Pedley, a 30-year-old chartered accountant. Paul said Steve was very interested in him as a person, which was unusual at some corporate interviews. He felt like he was interested in his family and more about him. Steve welcomed Paul onto the board in 1985. In 1986, the board consisted of Kevin Ewan, Pam Morgan, Steve's wife, Paul Pedley, the new instruction, John Williams, Les Nichols and Steve Morgan himself. Now in the job, Paul insisted they needed to improve things and spend a little bit of money on the infrastructure. Paul was instrumental in improving the way Red Row worked as an office and bought a new computer, which in Steve's own words, the whole thing was a bitter pill to swallow, but we have to move with the times. We all know how important show homes are to selling houses. They are the main selling tool. And during the 1980s, some serious competition was going on. Each developer was trying to get their house into the ideal home exhibition. Well, Red Row, they didn't need to do that. So what Red Row did is they made the most real life show homes you could ever look around. It was really important to make that house look like you were walking into someone's home. In the early days, show homes were mainly furnished by Pam Morgan, Steve's wife, and Louise McBride, Simon's wife. They worked together and furnished those early show homes. They would place children's drawings around, leave knitting on the sofa, all sorts of things like that to create that feeling that you're actually in someone else's home. So things got very, very busy and Steve's mum, Mary, she left sales and started helping the ladies furnish the show homes. The team was then joined by Brenda Walton, affectionately known as Supergran. She took over when Louise went to start up McBride Homes with her husband, Simon. The ladies knew that show home furnishing was big money and they started a company called Posh, spelled P-O-C-H-E. The company went on to furnish show homes up and down the country. With Red Row expanding to new regions, Pam, Steve's wife, felt a bit exhausted with the long hours and her home life was really beginning to suffer. So Pam set up a partnership with interior designers Martin Levain and Colin Welsh. That was in 1986. Over the next 12 years, the team took Posh into completely new levels. Pam, if you think about it, she went from an SRN to a full-time mom to an interior designer. Martin and Colin left Posh in 1998. And by then, it was run by Sandra Hughes. Between 1986 and 1990, Red Row used many external companies, such as financial advisors and legal companies. Certain members of those companies ended up migrating to Red Row and joined the Red Row Way. In 1985, it was time for Red Row to expand, and Red Row acquired the T. Headley Contractors Group from Ashford in Kent. They had an ace building arm called Milbury Homes. It was the perfect place to Red Row to set up Red Row Homes Southern Limited. Red Row decided to take on 
most of Headley's management team. There was only one person, the MD, who was unable to work the Red Row Way. He was later taken over by John Williams, who was a construction director at Red Row Developments North. He took the job and large sites started to appear in Ashford, Sittingbourne, Heathfield and the Isle of Sheppey. The house prices were high and Red Row raked in the profits. The property boom was absolutely crazy. The crazy thing was, buyers would buy the houses at foundation level and then sell them before the plasters even gone on the walls, making an extra £10,000 profit. By 1988 and 1989, the market was full of uncertainty. Was a crash looming? No one knew. The region itself was suffering from all sorts of problems or contractors going off to work for other developers who were poaching them on a daily basis. So it was decided in 1988 Red Row saw the coming storm and decided to pull out of the South East market. Red Row feared a crash and made a lot of money at selling its own land bank on. People were both amused and confused at why a company would pull out of a bustling property boom. Red Row's decision to pull out of the southeastern market proved true. The housing crash of the early 90s really did cause major problems in the building industry. Land was completely halved by 92 in value. Did Steve Morgan have a crystal ball? Because the recession was here. The recession didn't really dampen Red Row's enthusiasm to expand and that was evident in 1988 when Red Row opened an office in the South West. That was followed by Red Row, Yorkshire and Red Row, South Wales in 1991. Between 88 and 91 they opened three brand new offices. As predicted by 1987, Red Row homes were building 500 homes a year. They released a brand new range of house types. Roughly based on the old house types, the new country range was launched. The new country range and the old English range featured beautiful Tudor elevations and leaded windows. This really was the staple house types for Red Row for the years to come. Wilmar was owned by Tom Barron, a well-known man in the house building industry. Wilmar Homes started building in Accrington in 1958. Wilmar briefly came Salverson Homes and then it was quickly changed back. Salverson are responsible for all sorts of different businesses from brick making to transport and distribution. Early days Tom tried to persuade Steve Morgan to sell to Salverson. Tom must have thought Salverson was a good option because he went with them. Imagine Red Row under Salverson. I wonder what would have happened. Well, Steve made the right decision and said, no, thank you. Very kindly, no, thank you. The main problem was Tom didn't have a successor, so he was choosing to retire. So Salverson decided then to split the company up into regions. And in 1987, Tom approached Steve and said, would you be interested in buying Wilmar Lancashire Limited. Steve wasn't interested in Lancashire, he wanted Chester, but Tom said, what you'll actually do is you'll probably sell off all the land and then close the company. Well, Steve really wanted Chester, but that wasn't to be. Tom refused to sell it to him and eventually a deal was done on the Lancashire region. Steve played £7 million for it. To be honest with you, that was a bargain. At the same time, Red Row were expanding elsewhere and they set up their Midlands region office. Wilmar staff were really loyal people and they had a very relaxed approach to management. So Red Row decided to keep the management team intact. Red Row and Wilmar were very different. Wilmar had very contemporary designs and beautiful landscaping and Red Row, they went for the more traditional style of houses. But when Red Row purchased Wilmar, 
Redro took some of the best William R designs and actually integrate them into the current design portfolio. So at the time, the turnover for Wilmar was 37 million. So Red Row then took it to 68 million. What a turnover. Barry Sheridan of Wilmar was a man that everybody liked. Unfortunately, he passed away as MD in 1990. And this was a great loss to Red Row and Wilmar. It was Tony Stevens who took up the reins. And Wilmar Chester was still trading as Wilmar Holmes. This was a bit awkward for Red Row as they were still trading as Wilmar Holmes as well. They both decided to scrap the name and both go their separate ways. Wilmar Chester was then scrapped and it was replaced by Wayne Holmes. Red Row also dropped the Wilmar name and it became Red Row Holmes Lancashire Limited. Even though Red Row Holmes lost the Wilmar name, Wayne Holmes kept the popular Wilmar Holmes motif in their logo, which is still being used today. Into the 90s, Red Row construction was still going strong, concentrating on large reclaimed sites, pubs and industrial estates. But the 1990s, the construction market was volatile and risks were being taken all over the place. Red Row felt very uncomfortable with taking risks. The expansion of the company was painfully slow and it was headed up by MD Malcolm Hill and he stayed with Red Row until 1991 and then handed the responsibility over to Brian Evans. The money seemed to be in the commercial side of Red Row. So, in 1987, Red Row set up a company called Red Row Commercial. Commercial developments were becoming more Red Row's bread and butter and it was easy for them because every large homes development needed a local centre or a shopping park or a retail park. It was such a sensible move. In 1994, Red Row closed Red Row Construction Limited in favour of Red Row Commercial and they ended up building lots of local centres, shopping centres, pubs etc Brand new Red Row houses started to appear next to commercial developments. The partnership was perfect. Red Row Commercial wasn't always a bed of roses. From time to time, the company lost money, especially on a town centre site in Buckingham. In the late 80s, Red Row was outgrowing its current headquarters in Mould, and it designed and built a brand new group headquarters at St David's Park St David's Park was just off the A55 in North Wales and it was a great example of Red Row Commercial. The site featured many, many new Red Row houses, a business park as well as the group's headquarters and a rather lavish St David's Park hotel. St David's Park is a real success story and also the houses built on there tell the evolution of Red Row right the way through from the country range right through to the modern debut range in the late 90s early 2000. By 1996 Jane McGiven became MD of Red Row Commercial and Jane was what Red Row Commercial needed. Jane really shook up the business right from the ground up. Into the 90s the recession was still biting but an opportunity arose that was just too good to miss. The 135 acre site at North Up Hill was just the opportunity Steve and Peter needed. They thought of the possibilities, we already have a luxury hotel, why not have a golf course in the rolling countryside with 42 high end executive houses built around it. Well they got John Jacobs the world renowned golf course architect to design this beautiful new golf course. The site went on to be called Northup Country Park with over 200 acres of business and pleasure.
as the housing market came out of the recession, darker days were still to come for Red Row. Between April 91 and March 92, Red Row unfortunately lost three of its key men in just the space of 11 months. Mike Cusson battled a long illness before passing away. Mike had been a director since 1978 and he was just 41 years of age. Next was Tom Monaghan. This man was highly experienced in the construction sector of Red Row. His area was Red Row Homes Northern. Following Tom, Barry Sheridan passed away too. He was in charge of Red Row Lancashire. He passed away with cancer. So these three amazing men with over 100 years of valuable industry experience between them, these were dark times for Red Row. However, the remaining team were adamant about pushing Red Row forward. The team just got stronger and worked closer. In 1991, Steve announced that he was taking his family on a round-the-world trip for six months. That was a great shock to Red Row, as he'd been there from the very, very start. However, Red Row was in great shape, so the board were a little bit worried, but Steve went off and did his tour. So Red Row carried on as usual, but there was a slight change. The management team brought two new people on board. One of those people was Wilmar's Tom Barron. Yes, he joined Red Row board in 1990 as a non-executive director. So as we know, Tom comes with a wealth of experience and he's been building houses under the Wilmar name since the 1950s. Tom had gone into retirement as previously mentioned. Tom was closely followed by Leslie Holiday. Leslie Holiday was a former chairman of John Lang, a well-known UK-based construction company. These two were just what Red Row needed, and in 1990, Paul Pedley was promoted to deputy chairman. Les and Paul ran Red Row with ease in Steve's absence, but with the occasional phone call from Steve, Red Row continued on. So, in 1990, the board was as follows. Paul Pedley, Leslie Holiday, Steve Morgan, Tom Barron and Rihanna Walker as the group secretary. Steve knew that coming back was going to be hard and he probably put more thought into coming back than he did going. But Steve returned in February 1992 to be greeted with a welcome home party with a huge banner that said under new management. I don't know if you saw the humour in that. I can imagine things were quite difficult for Steve and a little bit strange when he returned. Things move on even just in six months. But Steve trusted Paul and most of the decisions they made together were good decisions. Paul was a chartered accountant and looks at things very, very differently. As Steve was a grafter from sight and he worked his way up. So Steve found himself with a lot of spare time in his hands. So what would he do? Well, he started to look at Red Row with fresh eyes. And they've always been a bit of a trendsetter with things like putting an ensuite in the smaller portfolio house types. It was four years since the last change of house types to Red Rose portfolio. The change was coming. Join us in part two and find out how the Heritage Range was born and the new brand Harwood Homes. Red Row Homes The Story by New Homes Historian and Show Homes Online.